Hey YouTube, I'm here to talk about Queen Sugar, Season 3, Episode 4. Okay, this thing opens up with Darla is visiting. And she informs Ralph Angel that she is not only visiting, but she is moving back to St. Joe. She said, if my son's going to be here in St. Joe, I will be in St. Joe as well. Ralph Angel's got to play this thing just right. Because Ralph Angel is not the legal father of Blue. Now, if he was smart, when he saw this thing falling apart, instead of just running, running away, you know, throwing her away, he should have adopted Blue when he found out that Blue is not his actual son. If he adopted Blue, then at least he would have some legal standing. But as it stands now, if Darla wants to take her child and move to Paris, there ain't a damn thing he can do about it. That is her son and not his. So it's a difficult situation. She, of course, Blue understands this to be his father. They had the father and son relationship. And it is a mess. Because Blue, I mean, Ralph Angel wants nothing to do with Darla. Now, I know it's not a popular a popular uh, idea. But I'm actually on Darla's side with this. This girl got involved in drugs when he was away in prison. She did things to support her drug habit, right? She has come out of that life. She's tried her best to build herself up again. And he is a constant reminder of her past. So this is not a good match. First, Ralph is a sourpuss and he's always, always, always miserable. So that relationship doesn't have any standing. That would not work out. But... Uh, that don't mean the girl can't be redeemed because she, she's a prostitute when she was uh, uh, when, when she was on drugs. The only difference between her and him is she she can get she can get pregnant. He can't get pregnant. So is he more mad because she had sex, or is she is he mad because she had she had a baby? Or he was the father of the baby. Anyway, so I'm with Darla. Darla can do a whole lot better than this. But I'm hoping she's not going to take this boy away from this, this man. I'm sure they're going to have, a, at some point, they're going to have a scene like that. It's going to go down where she's going to be tempted to take him away, and then she'll bring him back, whatever. They'll create some drama around it. Okay, Blue and Ralph Angel are planning a special celebration for Ernest's a memoram memorandum for Ernest. Uh Yeah, for Ernest. Ernest's passing correlates with uh, Blue's birthday. So Blue and the family want to have a commemoration ceremony uh, on Blue's birthday, right? So they're planning this. We'll get back to the, the uh, commemoration. It's kind of an elaborate thing. Okay, Charlie is in... Charlie... Uh, and Vi usually takes a uh, prosper to his appointments and things. She says that he's an old man. And if somebody doesn't take this child to his appointments, he won't go. That's the reason why married men live longer than single men. It's because married men have someone there to force them out of that bed into the doctor's appointments. Force them to eat right and do what is healthy for them. That's why they live longer, <laughs> in my belief. I read it somewhere. Anyway, so she can't get away. Uh, Vine is down in here trying to make these pies. She can't get away. She's too busy. So she asked Charlie to, to, to take charge of getting him to his appointments, or he won't go. Charlie goes over there. He's having a very hard time with paperwork. I understand that. I'm going to give me one of these shredder things. And start shredding stuff as I get it. Because when you get a whole lot of paperwork, this man's been living in that house for 30, 40 years and just throwing things in the drawer kind of thing. And now he can't find shit that he needs. So she gets there. He's exhausted from looking for medical papers and things. And she realizes that he's he's tired. He doesn't want to do it. And she said, well, I'll meet you tomorrow. And we'll reschedule tomorrow to make the appointment. All right. Uh, 
Nova is working on her book. Remember, not all the writings that the the, the publisher was in, initially interested in, none of them are her property anymore. They all belong to the newspaper because she was working for the newspaper when she wrote the articles. So she can't use them. She's got to start fresh from this book. She's got a storyboard up on the wall. She's got it uh, broken down into proposals and ideas. And she still hasn't written the first word in this new book she's going to write. She's not sure what she wants to write. She calls Vi, and Vi suggests that she should write about what she knows about, and uh, which is good advice. Write about uh, St. John's, St. Joe's Parish, about the families here. Uh, Nova seems inspired by that. Miss Effie, <laughs> Miss Effie, <laughs> Miss Effie is this woman down at the church, right? I guess she's a deacon. <laughs> She and Vi don't get along. Something has happened between them. Vi left the church and her specifically. Anyway, they got this deal where Vi is supposed to have the kitchen from 8 to 5 every Wednesday. This woman comes and says, no, no, our, di our dinner, our, our supper club has the kitchen from 5 to such and such, right? So Vi said, we had a deal. Your checks, checks have been clearing. So I don't know why this is just now coming up. If she's been working in the kitchen every Wednesday... And these people have been there everywhere. He said they've been there for years. How come it's just now overlapping? But apparently it's only overlapping by one hour. So it's four o'clock. So this woman says, Miss Effie says she needs her out by four as opposed to five. And Vi has not made all done all of her baking. So it was Effie's fault she overbooked the kitchen. Double book it. Overlapping one hour. All right. Charlie's working with this private eye. Now, they, they don't make it clear, this private eye, how she's getting their information, if she's just getting it from records or online. But because uh, I would think that she would have to be somehow inside of the laundry organization to get good information. She has plenty. They haven't revealed exactly what her relationship, relationship to the laundries is yet. So, as I suspected, Charlie is trying to get information about every person who owns percentage of this laundry company and the lady breaks it down which family members own how much each how much percentage each one has some have five percent some own three percent some own ten percent whatever and as i suspected charlie's going to try to buy out these people or get them out or because she also wants dirt on each one of these people in the laundry organization blackmail them out however she wants to get take a hold of each person's shares in this company that's why she needed the first one share just as she, so she's in part of the company and now she has to figure out a way to get everyone else's shares that's i think it's called a hostile takeover anyway Yeah, that's what she's working on. Darla wants to take Blue on his uh, school field trip. Blue's going on a school field trip somewhere. And uh, when Darla hears about it, she wants to take him on his trip, right? Ralph said, I've already signed the paper. I'm going to go on the field trip with, with Blue. But she, Darla really wants to go there. Initially, old Sourpuss, of course, he balks. He's trying, oh, I'm going to take him. I'm going to take him. Eventually, he does realize that uh, he's got to work with Darla because Darla is the mother and Ralph is officially, officially Ralph has no stake in his boy's life because he's not the father. And she's not going to allow him to adopt him now. It should have been done before. But there was no time. As soon as he found out, he broke up with her. All right. <laughs> Hollywood offers to buy buy. In fiction, usually, if you, if your main character or a primary character in a story, if they start coughing on camera, if they start coughing or they start showing signs of tiredness, usually that character is about to die. 
generally speaking, in fiction, they want someone to die off or to, to be uh, to, uh, diagnosed with a terminal illness or something. They always start off showing you little signs. They've been showing us signs that Zvi is exhausted since this new season began, right? Just by her just leaning on something, she's tired. Now, in, in, in the reality, her having this lupus, it may make her tired and exhausted. Exhausted most of the, a lot of the time. This may be something she has to live with for the rest of her life. She just gets gets overwhelmed. She gets tired. So she should be trying to do less work as opposed to more work. So Hollywood recognizes he doesn't want her working herself to death. He recognizes that moving these pies by the, by the van is not working. Some of the pies are getting destroyed in transit. So he offers. To get her this truck. <clears throat> Somebody he knows has a truck on a there's a delivery truck in a, in a junkyard. He said he can fix it up for two hundred bucks, and he can install a refrigerated compartment. Throw some panels, you know, magnetized panels on the side of it, and they've got a delivery truck. She, of course, balks. She's very prideful, and she explains to him how her ex-husband. How he bought that house that they live in, she's living in, and how he threw it up in her face for years. She don't want to get into a position where she owes anybody anything. So Hollywood is, is taken aback by the fact she said, "Oh, what do you mean owe oh, you? I don't, what do you mean owe oh, you? I mean we're gonna be husband and wife." So Vice got to get over herself, but she's been hurt by by a man before, and she's still cautious. She wants to do things on her own. She wants to be doing her own thing. But eventually she does come around and recognizes this makes no sense at all. I do need the truck. Hollywood wants to help. Because Hollywood has to be useful as well. He don't want to just sit. I mean, you can only watch so much TV, right? He's got money, but he wants to kind of be a part of the family, do something. So she's going to allow him to do this truck. Although we don't find that out until the very end of the episode. But she's going to let Hollywood do it. No mention of the wedding in this episode, but as, as I recall, that's what the next plan is. Uh, next thing happened, Remy and Nova. <laughs> they've been hinting, hinting, or at least a couple of times they've hinted, that Remy might be interested in Nova in a romantic way. And she may be interested in, in him as well. Now, Nova does not have a, this great track record with men or women. Nova is a bit of a free spirit. And this Remy, he's a, you know, one woman for the rest of his life kind of guy. Monogamous type for life person. So I don't know that that's a great match. But for the sake of drama, uh, Nova's going to be taking, taking Charlie's ex. So we know there's going to be drama there. Probably it'll be secret at first, then somehow or other Charlie will find out and da 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 da. But for the moment, they're just simple flirting. No physical contact at all, no serious conversations. They're just kind of remembering when they were raised, they were both raised in the same community. And uh, the father, how the father would take them fishing together. She, she comes across Ernest's old fishing box. So, they're flirting. Next thing is, Charlie discovers when she returns to take Mr. Prosper. Remember the first day he couldn't go. He was tired. She discovers that he has actually been given a 30-day notice to evict. Now, Prosper has been on the, in the, living in this house, they say, for decades. So, 30 to 40 years. Basically, his whole working life, he's lived in the same house, right? Charlie was under the impression that he owned the land. I don't know why she thought that because from the very beginning we knew that all of these farmers, the black farmers, were renting from the laundries. The laundries were the big landowners. These people were leasing their properties. So I don't remember if Charlie was privy to that as well. But laundries have been evicting these people. Uh, last week they had a, another couple coming in there telling Charlie that they had to move. Suddenly they made up a story about somebody was sick. 
but apparently the Landrys had evicted them as well. So now she's finding out, and she's red hot about it, that they're evicting these people. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so when Charlie takes Prosper in, she runs into someone. Remember that Latin guy? Good-looking Latin boy. He, man, he met Charlie in, in the parking lot outside of a restaurant, right? Her car wouldn't start. He got it started for her. He offered to give her his phone number. Well, he showed up again. But he is actually Mr. Prosper's doctor. No one calls him doctor, but he's in scrubs. I don't know why they would, they, it would make him a nurse. It doesn't, doesn't seem like it would make much sense. So Charlie, of course, now she's a lot friendlier, knowing that he's not a busboy somewhere, <laughs> I guess. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. I did one of my tooth. I was eating my cereal this morning, and a tooth popped out. So I've got my appointment. And hopefully we'll we'll remedy that. So for the moment, I'll just kind of, you know, eat this good side. <laughs> okay, so she's, uh, he's going to be apparently a part of this whole drama. So we don't know if Charlie is going to be, this is going to be her love interest, or is it going to be Jacob? There are hints there. Remy is, of course, he's, he's gone, but... Uh, He's still a kind of a an a half an interest because they had this relationship before. I don't know. I hope they're not gonna make Charlie the kind of person that would take advantage of somebody though. If this dude Jacob, if he sincere likes her, I hope she's not gonna be the kind of person that would go in there and just use him, play off of his emotions to get what she wants. I don't want to see that part of her. You know, I'd rather, if, if, if he's a devil, I mean, he's up to something, then that's fine. You know, all's fair. But I, I don't want to see her as, as kind of a, a character like that. All right, but this doctor, <laughs> there's no reason at all they would make the doctor disappear, reappear. Now, if it wasn't, if he wasn't going to be a part of, of this, uh, of her life. So more will be revealed there. Davis tell Davis got Micah. I guess Davis lives in Los Angeles where he where he plays sports, and then he has a place also here in town or near town because he's also uh, a part of uh, Micah's life. So they're out on the weekend playing video games. She he gets an emergency call kind of thing. We don't know what it's all about, but eventually him and Micah are in a car and he tells Micah that he has a sister, that Micah has a sister. Of course, Micah's like, what? <laughs> One of his first questions is, how old is she? 13 years old. Micah's about, he got, he's a year and a half from college, so that would make him about 16, right? Yeah. He's got a year left in school, so he can you can put do the math pretty easily and see that uh, this man was having has a second family. Micah never did rest all that well with the fact that he was cheating on on his mother, right? And now he finds out he's actually got another family, and that he had been cheating from the beginning because Michael when Michael was three years old, he was going out and meeting, seeing this other woman. So the other woman has died now, the mother, and now uh, now Davis is taking care of this child full time, informing his son of her existence. Michael gets pissed off, of course. He walks away. You see a scene where Davis is out outside the car. Michael, come back, come back, come back. Michael's, you know, he's gone. <laughs> Oh, the other question we ask is, does my mother know? Not yet. She already knows he's a tramp now. When she finds out this dude's actually got another family, and that all along, he was unfaithful all through their marriage. 
Okay, Charlie goes and sees Jacob. Talk, 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 she's so angry she can't even sit down. He's encouraging her to sit down. Let's talk it out. And uh, he's under the impression that there was some kind of something was done to the land in the floods. But uh, this could be a story that Landry has fed him. Because if the land the, the, if the land is so poisoned, why would Landry want it back? Anyway, so he wants to work it out, figure out our way around this. She balks. Eventually, she does calm down a little bit, takes a seat. So there, there's flirting energy between those two. Very subtle, particularly subtle on her on her end. We know Jacob likes her. And maybe she's softening to Jacob a little bit. But then why would they introduce his other love interest in? So that's the big mystery. Who is Charlie going to be betting? <laughs> all right. The last thing we see is the big ritual fire. When they all come together, they had this big old fire. Looked like pallets of wood. And then each one of them writes down their thoughts, their requests. Not request their thoughts. They want to convey to Ernest, this father, grandfather. So then they burn them up, and then the, the the smoke goes up into heaven. That's kind of how they leave it. They also show us that uh, Ralph has agreed to let Darla take take the the son on this field trip. Right? And then they sing this song. I try to say no. I forgot what the song was. It was it was some. Remix of some beautiful song. I forget which one it was. That was uh, Queen Sugar, episode four. I'll see you guys next week.